Now let's talk with Will Willimon. Will, I really appreciated your critique of mainline Christians who don't want to talk about heaven because their lives are going pretty well. But it seems like another reason that people don't want to talk about heaven is they don't want to talk about death. Oh, that, I think that's a great yeah. point. Uh, it, it is. It, I think, ideally, heaven enables us to talk about uh, the reality of death, and heaven is in no way a denial of the pain and the horror of death, which Paul calls the final enemy. Uh, but I think we, we do live in a kind of death-denying culture. On the other hand, there are people <clears throat> who profess to be Christians who have an unusual preoccupation with getting to heaven. Uh, yeah, there is that truth, too, that I think for a lot of people, they think, well, uh, Christianity is where you get your ticket uh, to eternity. You know, I'm a Wesleyan Christian, a Methodist. I, uh, John Wesley uh, advised early Methodists, don't worry too much about eternity. You, you, you worry about here and now living with Jesus so you'll be ready to live with him for eternity. And, and I think that, that is good advice. It, uh, I'm thinking about the woman who, when I asked why she had adopted nine foster children in a row, uh, her response was, well, I just... I saw a new world coming and I want to be part of it. That's where a belief in heaven sort of feeds back to right now. And Christians believe that one day we will be with God for eternity. So what better time than now to start getting accustomed to God? She was leaning God. in. As she, she was said, leaning in. To yep. new heaven, new earth. Yeah. So, so when we do get stuck in a sort of small view of heaven that's essentially all about what we want, that we'll get to see the people we want to see and be with the people we already love, what, what's missing in that? Um, I, I think probably our, our view, one thing that presses me like in the book of Revelation, which I preach from, um, it is this expansive, it's huge. But I love that view that uh, before the throne, uh, John says, I, I didn't see just the righteous people. I saw every creature under heaven, the bullfinches and the, the, wh the whales and every, every creature was singing before the throne. And... Heaven is, is that restoration of, of the world that, that is bigger than just me and my aches and pains. And uh, uh, I remember, I'm in Alabama, and uh, one of our churches, someone said uh, uh, when the, our, our churches became racially integrated uh, back in the 60s, somebody said, well, you better get ready to live with the, you better get ready to live with some of these people uh, in heaven, uh, get, get started right now, get along with them right here in the church. And I thought that was a good uh, indication that uh, a belief in heaven really does have implications for now. I think, it, well, now, but not yet. Didn't Martin Buber, the Jewish theologian, say heaven is now, but not yet? Does that fit? Yeah, I, and I, I mentioned, we, you know, we get, I think, glimpses and pieces of it. Our friend of mine, uh, whom Leah knows, and I wandered into a dingy little diner in South Carolina, and we walked in, and at every table, there were people sitting there with baseball caps, uh, working people, uh, and half, uh, and at every table, there was a white person and an African-American person, and they were both sitting there, and everybody was jovially talking, and it was, and all, and uh, my friend muttered as we went in and said, uh, I think we just walked into the kingdom of God. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a diner. It is a diner. Who knew? Yeah. Who, Who knew? knew? It's yeah. a heavenly banquet. Who knew? But I, I think we, we get those glimpses and, and we, we believe that one day that which we just glimpse in bits and pieces now will be a God's great final act and forever. Okay, now, you say that the kingdom of God, uh, you know, God, it's, it's, it's a place where God gets what God wants. And there are people who reject your notion, the Christian notion uh -huh. of heaven. What do you say to, to those folks? And... Um, how can you be so emphatic? Well, you know, my, my emphatic quality, I guess, it's, it's, we're talking about a hope. And uh, I, I can't, Christians generally don't go very far when we're asked to specify when I, exactly how does this look and all. Most of the talk in the New Testament is uh, very uh, it is metaphoric and, and these striking images. Too, Jesus didn't talk about this subject very much at all. And, um, uh, and yet, uh, 
I, I think it, it's, it's a hope based on what we've been promised. Here's Jesus dying on the cross, and the only person uh, there with him, he says, today you'll be with me in paradise, to a thief who didn't even really kind of understand, didn't know, presumably never heard Jesus talk anything. Jesus just, he, that, that kind of expansive, shocking love, we think will one day be complete. But that's a hope. If, if heaven is the place where God gets what God wants, presumably it might be a place where we do not get what we want. <laughs> that's, so, that's great. You that, know, if you reflect on this. problem with God over the years. Yeah, what, what would What's be hard for you in heaven? <laughs> what would be hard for you in heaven that God would want that maybe you would Well, I, it can't be comfortable being with people that I steadfastly avoid uh, all the time now and can't stand being around. Uh, the uh, I, I think it also, uh, I remember an English theologian who said, I wonder if heaven is like, a mirror in which for the first time we're, we truthfully look at ourselves. When I, wait, are we talking about heaven here or hell? Yeah. And in fact, in a lot of great literature, the difference between what we call heaven and what we call hell is often just, uh, you know, now, now what do you really want in life? Uh, now God is giving you what God gives you. Uh, uh, another thing I think uh, I've often thought like on any given Sunday only half of the Methodist church members much less than half are in actually in church now now we're the people who say we just can't wait to be with God forever when we can't even work out 10 or 12 Sundays a year to be with God now so th there is that wonderful tension it is a tension well thank <laughs> you for bringing us this word on heaven